Hey, Kevin. Hey, knowing the score last night and you're here for game two before it goes back to Arizona, is there, is there a concern about getting a win here or getting a split, or is that just not even entering you guys' minds? Um, you know, I think we're coming into this with momentum. You know, I think, uh, you know, going down the way we did yesterday was, it is what it is, but, um, you know, it's a new game today, and we're a young team, we're excited. Um, you know, I think we feed off the energy from the fans too. And, um, you know, no one expected us to be here too. So it's like, I, I think there's, there's a lot to be excited about and however this game goes, it goes. So we're excited. Follow up. You guys have used that us against the world mentality coming in. Cause as you said, nobody expected you to be here. Are you still riding that wave at all? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I, um, I think there is, you know, some newness to it. I think, um, you know, we know we know what their ball club is like. They're a really good team. Um, you know, they're riding a lot of energy right now, and they love playing here at home. So, um, you know, however this this game goes tonight, you know, we'll we'll be ready. Middle. Hi, Kevin. Um, for you personally, uh, do you feel like the extra time off you've been getting is uh, more beneficial for you to recharge, or do you could get, have concern again about getting rusty with the command and all that? Um, for me, no, personally. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of downtime with my job. You know, I sit in the bullpen, I watch, you know, the game kind of go on, and, um, you know, I got to mentally stay locked in and ready to go. Um, but, you know, other guys are different and, and stuff. So I, th I think the way we played yesterday was, was good and how we responded, you know, going down four or five, nothing, whatever it was, and then kind of chipping away, getting back into that game, um, was a good thing for this team. It kind of builds us some confidence knowing that we can play against anybody and we can play against this team. Um, so I think, uh, you know, for me personally, I'm ready when, whenever the phone rings. Okay, in the back of the right, Jesse. Um, just playing off of that, when you said coming in with momentum, we, did you mean just kind of the way you've been playing in the previous series or just the latter half of yesterday's game, kind of? Um, I think it's both. I, I think, you know, we've, we've kind of been proving to ourselves that we can, we can beat, you know, good teams. And, um, you know, I think they're, there's just a level of, um, you know, excitement to this. And, um, you know, I think, you know, this club and how we've gotten to this point is pretty, pretty wild. You know, we lost 110 games two years ago. And Mike and, you know, this uh, front office and, you know, Tori, everyone in our organization has gotten us to this spot now. And so, um, you know, I think however this series goes, it goes. but. Um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm looking forward to the opportunity whenever I get out there and uh, just trying to make the most of it. Okay. Following up to that, did, did you have any, like, October plans months ago that you had to change or <laughs> um, just because this is a little bit of a surprise? Yeah, I mean, you kind of have an idea to plan for the off season. I mean, we, we made it in on game 161, so um, things kind of had to change. But, um, you know, this is something you look forward to, I think, once you get into spring training. And we've been playing, you know, you know, huge games pretty much from the middle of August on. So, um, you know, that, you know, off-season plans can wait. <laughs> okay, over here on the left, JP. Thanks for your time, Kevin. Uh, when you think about Geraldo Perdomo as a teammate, what's your favorite story that encapsulates the energy that he gives your team, either, either in the clubhouse or on the field? Um, man, he... Uh, He's such a good kid. He's, he's a good player. Um, it's infectious the way he plays the game. Um, and I think as, as teammates, we kind of feed off of it as well. Um, you know, he makes solid plays in the infield. Um, he, he just he brings some, some level of leadership, I guess, for how young he is. Um, and it's really cool to see. And, um, you know, I know when he's out there, he, he's going to make the plays. So. And just quickly for you, Kevin, and your, your journey, you drafted multiple times. Can you just take me through those decisions about you were drafted, then you went back to school, eventually you went to U of A. Mm -hmm. What was that decision process like each time? Yeah, I mean, I, I had no scholarship offers out of high school. Um, I had to go to junior college for a couple of years. And 
um, you know, the the path to get to this spot is has been wild. Um, but you know, my my goal was out of high school is to play, you know, college baseball somewhere and get a get an opportunity to play, you know, Division One baseball. And um, I got that chance at University of Arizona, and um, we played all the way into the College World Series. And that was just an incredible ride on, you know, playing on that team. And, um, you know, I think now, you know, kind of going through pro ball, getting adjusted and getting, ag getting acclimated to the day in, day out grind um, has kind of put me in this spot now. So, um, you know, it's, it, it's just the, the will to keep going and never quit has kind of gotten me, gotten me into this position. Okay. I'm going to take one over here on the right, second row. Hey, Kevin, uh, your slider has really become just an incredible pitch for you here over the last couple of years. Can you just talk about the evolution of that pitch from, you know, when you were drafted to, uh, up until now? Yeah. Um, I, you know, this my slider, I kind of found it um, probably like my second year of pro ball. And um, I've had a lot of pitching coaches kind of help me kind of tinker with it and get that, that feel for it. And um, now what you're seeing, I think, is just the level of consistency where I feel like I can use it, you know, in certain spots, throw it for strikes, throw it as a put away pitch. Um, and it's just kind of helped me, you know, give the hitter something to think about now. And I know that's my bread and butter, but, um, you know, I think uh, there has been, you know, just a level of growth, I feel like, with that pitch. And, um, you know, I'm. Uh, I don't know. It's it's been it's been my bread and butter, I guess. Just to, just to follow up real quick, uh, when you were drafted, so the slider was not a part of your arsenal then at that point. No, I yeah, I um, I, I, I was kind of I threw like a fastball and a slurve, um, like curveball slash slider. I don't know whatever you want to call it, but um, and one of the few things that when I got into pro ball was to get get my slider to have it be a little bit harder um and it took a lot of time and effort to kind of get to where i needed it to be um and so yeah i think you know coming into coming out of college and getting acclimated in pro ball there's there's a difference there's a jump so um it's some sometimes things take time okay first row there on the left Hey, Kevin, um, what was that experience like yesterday being in the bullpen with the fans kind of right on top of you in that atmosphere? Yeah, uh, so cool. You know, it, it it feels like October baseball. You know, you watch, you know, these games on TV over the years and, um, you know, in the Northeast especially, like Yankees, Phillies, uh, Red Sox, like all those teams that get into this position, um, you know, it's – they bring it. They bring it every single pitch, and um, it's a cool environment for sure. You know, they get on you if you're not performing, but then they're your best friend when you are performing. So, um, you know, warming up in the bullpen, you hear you hear the jeers, you hear you know the crowd and stuff. So, um, it's it's just special. I'm just trying to take it all in. Okay. Take one more down here in the front. Yeah, mine's a follow-up to that, Kevin. Just what you guys expected versus what you saw yesterday with this crowd and how they are. Yeah. Um, you know, from pitch one, right? Schwarber hit the homer, and and you're like, okay, it's it's game on. So, um, you know, credit to them for for going in with a good game plan. But um, you know, today's a new day. I like I like where we're at, um, and we'll uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how this game goes. Tori, um, if last night's game had gotten away from you, would you probably have had more damage control last night or today, or did that sort of second half of the game really kind of give you guys some confidence um yeah i think you're always looking f to build momentum and and have push moments and you know we're down five nothing and this team just competes that's all they do and and you know, to be honest with you i wasn't surprised that we made it a game um with all due respect to the phillies i feel like um <clears throat> you know they did what they did they got out that lead but we just kept charging and i think that's one of the great characteristics that, that we have and and uh it gave us a little push for today. I think um, you know losing five to three is still still stinks no matter what, but um, we didn't shut down. I was very proud of that. But that's one of the main features of this ball of this ball club. To hand hey, front, Tori up here. Um, mm -hmm. hey, Craig. I know you want to win every game, and I know you, that's your goal, obviously. Yeah. But is there any must-win sense about this game tonight of getting a split here in Philly before you head back? 
Yeah, I think it's a pretty pretty important game. Um, I felt the same way about yesterday's game. Uh, and yeah, you, you, you have a couple thoughts in mind as you go into a series. Um, split, get home, see what you can do, create a little bit of distance between you and, and, your, and your opponent. But this is this is the final four. These are good teams. There's no shutdown. There's no home field advantage um, in, in our opinion, and I'm sure in their opinion. No matter where we play or where they play, they feel like they can go out the way we do and win a baseball game. So, um, But there is importance to this game, right? I think if we can come into, into their building and split, uh, and that's all we can do right now. We can't go backwards. Uh, I think it would give us a really good, really good push start for um, the next three at home. And a quick follow-up. Just I know you prepped for the crowd, but was mm -hmm. it more than you expected, or greater than you expected, or was it about what you thought? Uh, it was about what we expected. Um, you know, to be honest with you, the the final game against the Dodgers at Chase Field when it was rocking with 50,000 strong. Um, I was proud of our fans, and it was about the same. It was about the same, uh, um, same intensity, same volume. You know, these fans here are just very smart and very engaged. It's the timing of their of um, of their engagement. It's like as soon as the ball is gotten through, or as soon as the strike is 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 caught, um, they're just they're on it. And it's, it's just very quick engagement. Uh, but I'd say the overall sound is something very similar to what we heard at home that last game against the Dodgers. OK, row two over here on the left. Tori, yesterday when Corbin had that leadoff single, it seemed like an opportunity where maybe at some points in this season you would have ran him, tried to kind of scratch across that first inning run. I know Wheeler is really good against the run game, but what, what went into the decision to not run him there? Yeah, it's something that, that we all talked about, Dave and I talked about um, prior, to, prior to the game. Um, we don't want to run into an early out. We were going to take the sure bet once we felt very comfortable and got in sequence with Wheeler that um, that we were going to take some chances. But um, clearly, I don't think Corbin was feeling 100% comfortable, and Wheeler did a good job. He was mixing up his looks. You know, set, go, set, set, go, um, go, whatever it was. He did a really nice job of getting the ball to his catcher, which was preventing us from getting a really, a really good, consistent look at him. So yeah, it was 18, 16, 18 pitches. <clears throat> Into the end of the game that we had a chance to steal a base and advance them to second base, but I just felt like if we if if everything was triggered and we were ready to go, we are nothing's going to stop us. But they did a good job of shutting us down. And to, to follow up on that, throughout the postseason, you guys haven't run quite as much as you have did in the regular season. I know some personnel things play into that, right? Not having J Correct. Josh Rojas. Correct. But has that been a concerted effort to be a little bit more cautious during the postseason than maybe you were at points during the regular season? Uh, outs are outs, and there's 27 of them. They're precious, and that's that's the first thing that I talk about when we when we start going over our our stolen base. Um, dynamics like when when you can steal a base let's let's get up and go we're not going to stop but if there's any doubt just pay attention to the scoreboard the situation and if it's a big out let's just use a little more caution um the postseason yeah of course everything is amplified um it's a seven game series for the nlcs and every out is is critical but we are we are a um very risk friendly team when it comes to taking chances. We will take the right chances at the right times. We just haven't had the great opportunities because teams, teams are kind of punching us right now. We've got to be careful. Okay, we're going to stay there on the left. JP, then Steve. Thanks, Tori. Uh, yeah. With Merrill Kelly, how have you seen his approach to left-handed hitters evolve over time? I think the changeup is in play for him. I think the cut fastball on both sides of the plate is in play for him. And he's developed a lot of confidence in those two pitches. And, you know, when you can crowd a left handed hitter and then work soft away, um, and also the top bar, uh, I think you're, you're going you're gonna to add to your effectiveness. You know, it, it, it's very simple, right? You're, if you're going to focus on one spot down and away to a lefty or a righty, you're going to probably make a mistake where a ball is going to drift over the plate. But I, I know that Merrill has done a really nice job of, of trying to um, command the baseball, work both edges of the plate soft and hard. And he's got a lot of confidence in his changeup. And just a follow-up, uh, somewhat unrelated, Tori, but I know that you've utilized pickup basketball as a way to maintain a lot of chemistry and, and joy on your coaching staff. Yeah. What have been your favorite games of the year? Do you have a scouting report on anybody on the on the staff that's really talented? Did you put them up to this, Steve? I'm sure you did, didn't you? Yeah, I know. I love it. Um, 
let's see, we actually played this morning over at the Palestra, and um, the Palestra is probably my favorite venue of all of them that we play in. So we play in every 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 city that we play baseball games in. Um, if it's a three game road trip we play in three cities uh, but there's something special about the palestra there's so much history there i spend time walking around um, learning about the building and uh it's just a lot of fun look we get away from the grind it's a very um it, it's a very um tough time of the year right now where ev we're all in on one thing and that's the win a baseball game when you can step away with your staff and and kind of refresh your mind and your spirit I think it's it's very healthy and I talked to our players about balance and I believe in that so yeah we got up early this morning went out and played some hoops and uh, had some fun um, easily the best player is Ryan DePanfalo our head tra head athletic trainer he says that he wasn't a basketball player in college but I know that he was he played division three basketball at Springfield College and he can light it up he, he he's got he's got half court range so it's a lot of fun we the beauty of it is we are we think we're moving way faster than we actually are and when we see video of ourselves i cannot believe how slow and old we look so we laugh about it but it gets very serious we're all very competitive and uh it's a great competitive outlet for me for sure mm -hmm. steve toward you have a, a starter for game three yeah brandon fought will start game three tomorrow just no, i'm sorry your... game three on um, whatever day it is yeah, yeah. whatever day is today <laughs> i don't know i'm so lost i know us too uh What's the thinking with, with what you've seen from Fought? What do you like? Well, I like so much about his last outing, right? It was it was 47 pitches, 42 pitches through four and a third, um, commanding the baseball. <clears throat> He's a little bit like Merrill. You know, he can he can walk the baseball around the zone with, with different shapes, speeds, um, and, and spin rate. So I, I just, I feel like being able to do that against a, a very, um, rugged Philly lineup where you can't be predictable in one spot with one pitch because they will they will hurt you. Uh, I think Brandon being able to change speeds and work the ball around will, will be very good for us. We here on the right, second row. Hey Tori, uh, I know your bullpen was was really good once again yesterday. Um, just curious, what went into the decision to not use Thompson or Ginkle or Seawald? Would that have changed if it was a one run game late, or how do you kind of view that at this at this point? Yeah, um, we had Ginkle warming up in a couple different scenarios. If it got within one run, we were going to use Ginkle. I have I have different parts of the lineup that I've targeted um, for certain guys in our bullpen. I just didn't feel like it reached that point where um, where Thompson was was going to get into the game. Um, and I wanted to get a look at some of our other guys who I feel like were throwing the baseball well and could push it to the next level if we got there. We just didn't quite get there. The way I'm looking at it is um, we're going to have, you know, four games in five days or six days, whatever, it'll, whatever it will turn out to be. Um, and I need to preserve the back end guys. Thompson, Sal Frank, Ginkle, and Seawald. I expect them to get a lot of work here in the next several days. And if they do get work, that's a good thing because it means we're ahead. Okay, one more here on the left, first row. Hey, Tori. Um, what has been sort of your guys' experience with Nola and what you've seen from him against you guys? Um, a little bit of what I'm talking about with like um, a couple of our guys in Fott and Merrill, uh, you know command of, of p several pitches, um, does a good job of controlling the running game, and is, is just engaged, engaged one through nine. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't back down, and he pitches very well to a game plan. So we've got our work cut out for us today. Um, they have a very strong one-two. We, kn we knew that coming in, um, and we just got to capitalize on mistakes, hopefully, that he'll be making in the zone. If he does, we, our offense has to be ready to pounce on every mistake that he throws. He doesn't throw a lot of them. And just a quick follow-up to the basketball question. What's the coolest venue you guys have played in, in your opinion? Um, I would say Fog Allen in um, in Can the University of Kansas. It was an, it was the um, March or the Midnight Madness was gonna. They were waiting for midnight that night, and we were playing the day before. So um, they were already lining up in their tents or whatever. And here we pulled in in our bus and we step onto that that venue that's where basketball for me was invented right um with naismith that was that was pretty impressive i i felt i felt a big basketball presence there it was pretty cool